Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia News Channel. For the top stories, we are starting with you on Friday, 23rd. PM Modi leads tent in last and yoga day celebration. Bangladesh PM Hasina arrives in India for two-day state visit. in which the location plays no small part. This year's theme, Yoga for Self and Society, emphasizes yoga's vital role in fostering individual well-being and social harmony. PM Modi congratulated all Indians and those doing yoga in every corner of the world and said the world is witnessing a new yoga economy going forward for the last 10 years. बीते दस वर्षों में योग का ये जो विस्तार हुआ है उससे योग से जुड़ी धारणाएं बदली हैं योग अब सीमित दायरे से बाहर निकल रहा है आज दुनिया एक नई योग इकोनॉमी को आगे बढ़ने में देख रही है आप देखिए भारत में ऋषिकेश काशी से लेकर केरला तक योग टूरिज्म का नया ट्रेंड देखने को मिल रहा है दुनिया भर से टूरिस्ट इसलिए भारत आ रहे हैं क्योंकि उन्हें भारत में ऑथेंटिक योग सीख रहा है स्ट्रेस Meanwhile, thousands of yoga enthusiasts and practitioners also performed exercises and meditated across India, while Foreign Minister S. De Shankar performed yoga with foreign diplomats in Delhi. Navy personnel did asans at sea. Jay Shankar said that yoga has been a great bonding point for different cultures when it comes to building international relations. So it was fantastic to be here in Delhi, actually able to practice yoga on International Yoga Day with Dr. Ashanti Shankar. I mean, both myself and my deputy are regular yoga practices, and so actually to be here with all the diplomatic corps was fantastic. I think it really is India's gift. The Indian diplomatic missions across the world, including in Nepal, the U.S., and Japan, also held yoga sessions to create awareness about the importance and benefits of yoga in today's life. The United Nations declared June 21st as International Day of Yoga in 2014, adopting a measure proposed by PM Modi. And in his first comments following the recent spate of terror attacks in the region, PM Modi earlier on Thursday said he would not hesitate to teach a lesson to the enemies of Jammu and Kashmir. PM Modi assured that the government has taken the attack seriously. The new generation of Jammu and Kashmir will live with permanent peace. We will make the path of development stronger that Jammu and Kashmir has chosen, he said. Multiple attacks which began on June 9th have so far claimed 12 lives and injured dozens. India has blamed Pakistan for the attacks. While Islamabad has not reacted, it has in past denied such accusations. Notably, ties between both the neighbours have been frozen since 2019 after New Delhi ended the special status given to Jammu and Kashmir and split the region into two federally administrated territories. While the region is claimed by both India and Pakistan, New Delhi has maintained Kashmir was, is and will remain an integral part of India and no other country has locus standing on it. Moving on. A mob brutally lynched a man in Pakistan's SWAT on Thursday night, torturing and burning him to death over allegations of discretion of the Holy Quran, the videos of which surfaced on social media. The police had taken the suspect into custody, but the mob took him from there and set him on fire. Later, the unruly group of people attacked the police station and torched it as well. Blasphemy is a sensitive subject in Muslim-majority Pakistan, where just an accusation can lead to a street lynching. 
In a similar incident that took place last month, a mob had attacked a house belonging to a Christian man in Punjab's Sargodha over alleged discretion. While blasphemy is punishable by death in Pakistan, no one has been executed by the state for it, though numerous accused have been lynched by outraged mobs. Meanwhile, as Pakistan continues to grapple with economic challenges, people are tired of skyrocketing prices which are contributing to inflation in the country. The cost of essential food items, including milk, have also gone up, raising the people's financial burden. Our report. People in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed concerns over skyrocketing prices. Among the hardest hit is the cost of milk, a staple in every household, which has seen unprecedented price hikes. A resident said that daily wage earners have been suffering the most, as it has become extremely difficult to run households in such inflationary times. This follows Pakistan's newly announced budget that has increased tax burden with limited focus on the needs of common people. Local media reports suggest the cost of milk in Karachi surged notably after dairy farmers and wholesalers, in collaboration with Commissioner Karachi, settled on an agreement to raise prices by rupees 20 per litre. The residents lamented there is no check and balance on prices. The Interior Minister of Germany, Nancy Faeser, on Thursday said that the secret negotiations with third countries regarding the deportation of criminal migrants to Afghanistan have begun. She said that Germany is working intensively to be able to deport dangerous Islamists and perpetrators of violence to Afghanistan. German officials have intensified their focus on deporting Afghan migrants from the country after an Afghan migrant attacked a gathering of an anti-Islam group with a knife, resulting in the death of a German police officer. Meanwhile, several other German officials have also supported the decision to deport criminal migrants from the country and have stated that they are exploring ways to facilitate these deportations. And at the invitation of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, his Bangladeshi counterpart, Sheikh Hasina on Friday arrived in Indian capital New Delhi for a two-day long state visit. It's the first incoming visit in the third term of PM Modi. Hasina is scheduled to hold bilateral engagement with PM Modi on Saturday, after which both sides are likely to sign over a dozen bilateral instruments. Notably, this will be Hasina's second visit to India in less than 15 days as she was among the international leaders who attended the swearing-in ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Union Council of Ministers earlier this month. And with the Dalai Lama's advancing age, the worries of exiled Tibetans about their future are also increasing. China has insisted it will choose his successor and they now contemplate ways to tackle it. A report. Nestled below the icy Himalayan peaks, the world of exiled Tibetans has centered around the Dalai Lama for the past six decades. But now, with his advancing age, the worries about the future are increasing too. The exiled Tibetans in India are now forced to contemplate a future that looks increasingly fraught as the current Dalai Lama turns 89 in a few weeks and China insists it will choose his successor. The survival of the movement for Tibetan cultural and religious autonomy is a major concern. With every passing year, they have become more fervent in their prayers for the Dalai Lama's long life. Because it's very funny, um, China no religion, they are communists, then how can choice to the reincarnation Lama? This is only religion side. 
This is very funny things. Earlier this week, a delegation of U.S. lawmakers met the Dalai Lama to celebrate a bill that President Joe Biden is expected to sign that would counter what the U.S. calls China's disinformation that Tibet is part of China since ancient times. Tibetan political leaders have hailed the move and hope that with U.S. weight, they might gain legislative support from more countries against China. Tibet's president, Pen Sering, said the Dalai Lama had the foresight to put a robust democratic system in place, which would carry on the work for Tibet's movement even after him. Every human being, everybody who is born in this world will have to leave this world one day. Uh, it will be the same with His Holiness. Everybody knows that. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of concerns. But what His Holiness, uh, with his foresightedness and visionary leadership, did uh, as soon as coming out into exile uh, was to introduce democracy. And he built this democratic uh, structure uh, and the form of governance over the last 65 years. So it has been six and a half decades since we came into exile and took that long to build this kind of institutions that are necessary because when we came to exile we had no idea what democracy meant that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night tag tv brings you daily news bulletin from india breaking news and views from india